Well, let's get some more thoughts now on the heavy metal military roadshow across uh, Eastern Europe. I'm joined live in the studio by Marcus Papadopoulos, editor of Politics First magazine. Nice to see you in person, sir. I've spoken to you a lot so many times before down the line. And what do you make of this? It's been a huge show of military strong arm bravado. You can call it what, what you like. Yet yeah, some people have been in favour of it, but there have been a lot of protests as well. Does East Europe really need this huge show of American strong arm bravado, or for a better way to put it? Well, Kevin, let's say it as it is. That American military parade was dangerous, provocative and foolhardy, mm. and it's aimed at Russia, and it's hardly conducive to ensuring peace and stability in Europe. In regard to European sentiment, have, European, have, have the people of Europe been asked about whether they want an American military parade going through their countries? No, they haven't. And it's all very well for policymakers in Washington to come up with these antagonistic um, spectacles because they don't live in Europe. They don't live near to, to the Russian border. And, of course, Russia is going to interpret that American military parade quite correctly as being very, very aggressive. And European people don't want to be caught up in a potential conflict between America and Russia, because, of course, that could mean potentially devastation for them. I mean, how strong is public opposition, though, across... Uh, I suppose it gets... Uh, it, it depends where in Europe you yes. are, how far west you are, how far east you are. But yes. what, what is public opinion in the areas in Eastern Europe that these tanks, all this rolling stock for want of a better word, been, and all his uh, personnel have been going through. What do people feel about it there, generally? Well, well, it's certainly the case in Germany, in the Czech Republic, that thousands of people object not just to the American military parade, but to um, the American military presence on their countries, because, once again, they're extremely fearful of being caught up in a potential war between Russia and America. And until policymakers in Washington understand that it's ordinary people's lives on the line here, potentially on the line here, then we will keep on seeing these parades. Well, how dangerous is Russia then? I mean, the, the uh, military here is saying it's, uh, this show is needed as a show of strength to Russia because of the inherent danger from Russia. What inherent danger is there from well, Russia to well, these countries? Well, the notion being put forward at the moment by Washington that Russia is a threat to uh, European s uh, security and stability, quite frankly, is just preposterous nonsense. Anyone watching this interview should take out a map of modern-day Europe, look at the western borders of the Russian Federation, from the Baltic Sea to the Black Sea, with the exception of Ukraine, they are littered with EU and, most importantly, NATO member states. Let me emphasise that, NATO member states. That means that a western military alliance is on Russia's border. Now, who's been the provocative one? Who's been the aggressive one? How would America react if a Russian-led western military alliance was in Canada and in Mexico. The Americans didn't like it when uh, Khrushchev put ICBMs in Cuba. We saw their response. Why shouldn't Russia be allowed to have national security? Very good point. But, of course, for the average person on the street uh, looking at this, they're wondering where it's going to go next. <clears throat> well, uh, that's the $64,000 question. Personally, I don't believe there will be a third world war between Russia and America mm. because both countries have been in this situation before and after the Cuban Missile Crisis. Um, a hotline was installed in the White House and in the Kremlin. However, um, all it takes is one wrong interpretation, all it takes mm. is one accident, and of course the world could be engulfed by a third world war. Who would be responsible for that? Well, once again, have a look who's on Russia's western borders. Let's try to look on a more positive note. Um, at the moment, of course, relations between Russia and the West are at the lowest ebb than they have been for such a long while, since the end of the Cold War. Is it going to get better any time soon? And who needs to make the first move? Well, I think that everything at the moment, it's stemming from Ukraine, and Russia quite simply cannot countenance Ukraine becoming a member of NATO, mm. because if that happened, it would mean that the West has succeeded in placing a sanitary cordon on Russia's western borders. And if that happened, Russian influence in Europe would be drastically decreased and thereby in the world drastically decreased. But the Americans, on the other hand, are determined to... Rush, the Americans don't seem to have any respect for that. No, they that, don't. That it's kind of Russia's near no, abroad, as it Absolutely. Would, as Even it since the it. collapse of the Soviet Union, the Americans have been very clear that, uh, that in order to safeguard their global dominance, they must make sure that Russia remains a weakened country. They achieved that in the 1990s, but, of course, since President Putin came to power, things have changed, and that's what they're not happy about. Marcus Papadopoulos uh, from... Uh, 
Politics First magazine. Nice to see you in person. Thanks for coming to the, into the programme today.